Welcome to the 2016 Sigchrome Project Car. Each month, we are taking you behind the scenes of an innovative, handcrafted car build. And for your chance to win this beast, simply purchase any quality Sigchrome product and enter your details at winwithsigchrome.com.au. This is George, the boss man at Python Vehicles. He's been building Cobras for 30 years and he puts his products to the test on the racetrack, taking on some of the world's best sports cars. This is going to be one of a kind the Cobra. The man responsible for hand building the Sigchrome project car is Joe. He's George's trusted mechanic and has a real passion for his craft. If you can't do it, get out of the way, because I'll do it. And I'm Telfo, editor of Street Machine magazine. I'm here to document the madness. Can you do me a favour? Yeah. Let me do the work and you go make some phone calls up that end of the shop and leave me alone. Done. I'm Thank out you. of here. Done, dude. G'day, it's Telfo. We're down here for part two of the Sigchrome Cobra build. We've got George from Python Vehicles Australia and also Tom from Enkelman's. He's the engineer. George, from a car builder's point of view, getting this all legal is extremely important. Tell us what Tom is here to do for you. Yeah, look, Tom's been involved in uh, Python Vehicles for a, a long, long time now. Basically, we need two things. We need to get an engineer's report and we need a roadworthy certificate. And Tom's here to inspect the beginnings of the car and then take over and do some specific testing that we need to get done on the car. So basically, Tom, I think, uh, what, what sort of stuff do we quickly need to do? Well, I mean, first up, we'll do a torsion and beaming test um, to see that the chassis is stiff enough. It's gonna be quite a powerful car. We wanna make sure that it's gonna handle well. Beyond that, basically our role is to make sure that the vehicle complies with all the safety standards that it needs to. So you still need side intrusion bars, and it's gotta meet all the emission testing that a Corolla needs to meet, right? That's quite right. Probably the best way to think of it is it basically has to be equivalent to about a 2001 model brand new vehicle, except that it doesn't have to be crash tested. Well, I guess this is like building a house. We're getting the foundations right, starting with the chassis, yeah. and we're off to a good start. Correct, That's yeah, right. absolutely. Hey, Joe, Joe, Joey! Yes? Hey, I've got to walk you through some stuff. Look, I've drawn up some drawings for the intrusion bars. I want it to go up to 10 mil. But if we go to 10 mil, don't you think that's just going to be too heavy on the doors? I'm worried about Rego. I'm worried about the engineer's report. Can we try 8 mil? I, mean, yeah. I don't want a heavy door and over time sagging, sagging, sagging. And then on the other hand, 10 mil is going to add safety to the side of an impact yeah. intrusion, so you might yeah. as well go so 10 mil. A, I'd rather go the heavy than the light. That way we sort of covered a little bit. Yeah. I'll try to stop interrupting, but I've still got Please. to keep you in the loop, dude. Okay. I'll let you keep going there, and I'll just keep doing this and seeing what we can work out. Go make I'll, some more phone calls. No, I'll make you a cup of coffee, no, dude. It's a bad time. Since we were here last week, Joe's been very busy on the chassis. As you can see, mate, the pedal box here looks like you're fabricating it from scratch. Basically what we do is we build everything in-house for our pedal boxes. And I just measure everything, make everything up as it goes, and virtually sit in the car, make my own pedals. See where my pedals need oh, wow. to be compared to the foot boxes. And we've even put adjustments in there so I can move the pedals oh, okay. forward and back. So someone shorter, someone taller. So if the winner of the Sigchrome Combo is six foot seven, we might have to adjust but it's easily done. We don't have to cut anything up. No. It's all ready to go. It's all ready to go, yep. Just bolt your pedals, move it forward, and you're done. That's awesome. All right, guys, the body is on for its first trial fit. I think people think because it's a fiberglass body, it's easy, it's easier than working on a metal car, but nothing could be further from the truth. There's a lot of work. The body's going to come on and off maybe five or six times. So let's have a bit of a look, Joe, at what you've been doing today. Yeah, um, so basically things that you can't see is we've uh, bonded the bonnet hinge pivots on. And we've put some pins on the inside of the guard. So we've got an opening bonnet now. Yep. Which is as easy as that sounds. It's, you know, it's a one day process just to get that to happen. So we've done that, we've got the dash in, the cockpit's in, the boot floor is all sitting in. So the body's sitting up nice, just as we expected it to. A um, few little modifications to get everything to sit nice and yeah, ball's rolling. This is, this is like you said, this is you know, the first time of half a dozen times it's gonna be on and off. 
Now one of the really cool things about any sports car is the gauges and the dash. And especially in an open car like this, where you can see everything all the time. So take us through what you've done there. Well, basically we get our dash um, and I mark out where all our switches are gonna go, where all our lights are gonna go. And I'll get my gauges and I'll wire up the dash so they can be removed. So it'll have one plug. Yep. So it's just wow. a simple process if someone needs to take the dash out for whatever reason. So yeah, the dashes look pretty cool and you can see a feature that George has done. He's actually angled the gauges to face the driver. So, Which is practical and looks cool. Yeah, and in our very early cars that was just flat. Yeah. So, but that way there it just gives it a bit of a feature and it looks pretty cool. Awesome. Alright George, the car's coming along really nicely. We're still waiting on some stuff though, aren't we? Yeah, we are Simon. I think the hardest thing about building these cars is the infrastructure that's involved in actually purchasing all the spare parts. And particularly you're waiting for people to supply parts that they don't normally have in stock themselves. Yeah. So we'll place in an order for those items and there might be probably about four or five days or even up to two weeks before we receive them. Tim Bo, it's George from Python Racing, dude. How's it going? Hey, is Baz around? Uh, he is. Please. T tell him it's George from Python. Yep. Thanks, dude. So that whole infrastructure of getting parts is quite complicated in itself. Yep. Especially when things are coming from overseas. Well, yeah, one, one of the issues we've got at the moment is one of our dear suppliers, are one of the premium Ford V8 suppliers in North America, they've supplied us with an engine and a six-speed gearbox. And once again, it's that whole waiting to get it. It's actually being air freighted halfway across the world. So it's in Dubai at the moment, <laughs> sitting in an airport somewhere there before it goes onto another plane to come to Melbourne. But it's going to be a very spectacular engine. So right. it's worth waiting for. Look, no doubt about it. Joe particularly is excited about getting his teeth into a five litre Coyote engine, so we're excited to have the new Ford power plant that uh, Ford is supplying to fit into one hour car, absolutely, yeah. Oh, we can't wait to see it, mate.